Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love getting something for nothing. And when I'm using S3 server-side encryption, having Amazon manage the keys for me is a great way to make my encryption life a lot easier. So let's check out server-side encryption with an S3 managed key. One key theme when we're working with cloud services is, of course, working smart, not hard. And that means using more of Amazon's managed services to get them to do work for us that I don't have to do. That's always a big win. I'm a busy guy. I don't have time to do all of the things, especially when I'm over here putting out 12 dozen other fires as well. Help, 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 help. So this is where S3 server-side encryption with an S3 managed key comes into play. This one, Amazon is actually building the keys, managing the life cycle of the keys, and doing all the encryption work for you. Indeed, it's a lot like my old move where I show up to the party empty-handed. What? I didn't know. I wasn't prepared. I brought my object. <laughs> <laughs> so you can bring your object along and provide it to Amazon. And what they'll do is in the background, Amazon creates a customer specific master key that's used uniquely for your requests. The S3 processing service will generate a data key that's unique for this particular object that you've requested, encrypt the object, boink, drop that object in your bucket, and then encrypt the key that they used with the master key that's unique to your account. Keeping in mind that Amazon has a maintenance lifecycle process attached to this master key as well, and it is periodically rotated in the background, much the same way that most enterprises would manage their keys as well. So this means that you're getting the benefit of 256-bit encryption. You're getting object-specific data keys. So even if one key were compromised, it would limit the scope of the potential uh, impact. And then, of course, you're using those S3 managed keys, which are rotated on a regular basis as well. It's also really easy to enable it. You can do this directly through the management console by turning on S3 encryption or by specifying the XAMZ server side encryption header in your requests, making this available then for the command line, system developer kits, and of course, through the API as well. So a big selling point is Amazon manages the key, they do the processing work for you, they add life cycle for it on top, and heck, I'm definitely going to dance if I want to because this is easy and it's secure. Telling our staff to use encryption and enforcing encryption are two separate things. To help enforce it, we're going to use an IAM security policy and within it, check the request headers and use a statement condition to confirm that encryption was correctly used. Now, the policy example I have here is a bucket policy or a resource policy, so we would create it and actually attach it to the bucket itself. This policy focuses on one specific action, putting objects in. We are going to deny that action on this particular bucket if anybody isn't using the correct encryption key value, AES-256, or if for some reason that encryption key just isn't present in the header at all, we're also going to deny those actions as well. This will effectively ensure that nobody can put objects into the bucket unless they're using server-side encryption with an S3 managed key. Over in the management console, I've logged myself into my S3 dashboard and I've got my little BART-CBT-Nuggets bucket here. I'm going to go ahead and jump inside there. I do have one object, the little spring salamander picture here. And if we take a look at the object's properties, you'll see that it doesn't have encryption enabled currently. Now, turning this on for a single object can be done right through the management console just by clicking on that link. Boom, I can choose uh, server-side encryption with an S3 managed key or the KMS option on here. We'll go ahead and choose server-side. All right, cool. Hit change. All right, successful. So if we take a look at that again, now it shows that it's using the server-side AES-256 encryption. If I upload a new object here, let's go ahead and grab another one. All right, there's a picture of Bart. And we'll go ahead and upload that. On the upload properties, it's going to ask me if I want to enable encryption here as well. So I can go ahead and choose S3 master key. So this is for a new object. And I'll go ahead and say next, upload. It will also upload that object as well. One other trick to help ensure that you get your objects encrypted as well is by choosing the default settings that you want them to use. So I'm currently in the bucket itself, and if I go up here to properties, I can choose default encryption. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that and turn on S3 manage keys. It says, hey, by the way, you should probably update your bucket policy just to make sure that you're actually enforcing it. And we'll look at that more in just a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. Notice that it does say that the bucket is now using that default encryption option. So let's go back and try to upload an object one more time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and upload this this time. All right, I'll we'll choose the picture of the yurt. And we'll go ahead and say upload. I'm not going to pick any other options here. This should produce an encrypted object. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Yep, there it is. Okay, so I didn't actually choose that option. It did it by default. Thanks, AWS. 
For my last trick, I want to apply that security policy that we were looking at earlier on. So I'm going to go up here to the permissions tab, and I'm going to go directly into the bucket policy option here and just paste in that policy that we were working on. Okay, got to fix the bucket name. Here we go. Bucket name is bart-cbt-nuggets. And I will save that. Boom. And then we'll put that down here as well. Great. And we'll go ahead and save. Now, to confirm, let's try to upload one more object. We'll try to upload, try to add a file here. I'm going to try to picture of the cat. This time, I'm going to go in and specifically try to turn off the encryption. I'm going to set this for none. All right. And we'll go ahead and hit upload. Ah, uh, yep. Okay, down here at the bottom, error, 100% failed. Let's take a look at it, details, forbidden, okay? And it's because I didn't use encryption. Over on the command line, I've set myself up with my CBT admin user account, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload an object through the command line, uh, and we'll set that server-side encryption flag as well. So we're gonna use AWS S3 API put object command, and we're also gonna set a few other flags. So we're gonna go ahead and do bucket, and that is bart-cbt nuggets. We'll also do server side encryption. Oops, gotta put that S in there. Boom, server side encryption. We'll set that for AES 256. We've gotta set the key name. That should be osimodel.png, just like the file. And then for the body, which is the actual object itself, I have this little OSI model uh, photo that's sitting here in my folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command. Hopefully we got it right, and it should give me a validation uh, that we did indeed use the server-side encryption piece. Sweet, yep, that's looking pretty good. And if we jump over in the bucket, we should be able to see our image. We'll go ahead and refresh the bucket real quick. Cool, and there is the OSI model, perfect. And if we pull up the details, indeed it is using AES-256 server-side encryption with an S3 managed key. For more information, take a look online, AWS S3 server-side encryption. Therein, you'll find useful links and information about the three different server-side encryption options that S3 offers. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.